Welcome to 2014 Winter Paralympics from beautiful Sochi, Russia, and our gold medal game today between Russia, won nine games and only one loss so far, and Canada eight and two right behind them. The gold medal match between host nation Russia Federation and the defending gold medalists from Canada. The Pipers of Scotland heighten the prestige of this event as they prepare the players and their fans for this round robin session. There's the Pipers and the drummers as they come up the ice. And I'm proud to introduce my partner Katie for this broadcast today. Thank you, Ed. Yes, um, enjoying listening to these pipers. Of course, curling is said to originate in Scotland, of course, and the ice has been very well prepared, provided by the head ice technician, Scott Henderson of Edinburgh. So we should be seeing some great curling with these great conditions. Ken Stevens qualified for Paralympic curling, and after the round robin and semi-finals, those surviving the two teams, Russia and Canada, will battle it out today. Yes, and uh, the Ice Cube, it's one of a uh, new cluster of venues inside the, the Olympic Park. Um, and here we see we've got uh, Russia, they beat Great Britain. It was a very dominant performance from Russia. That score there was 13-4 with, of course, that record seven-point end. And then we have Canada, they beat China. A bit closer there, it was 5-4 in the other semi-final. Pipers. Getting things primed up for the game here. Canada with a large contingency of fans here, but of course they are going up against all of the fans, these 3,000 seats in this arena, mostly Russian supporters. Yes, they've certainly been vocal, haven't they? I've oh. quite enjoyed the support that's uh, been in the Ice Cube Center here. And let's meet our team. Russia first, Alexander Shevchenko, the lead player for Russia. At second, Sri Lanka, Paka Homova, and at third, very good player, Merit Romanov, and at skip, the leading skip in this tournament, Andrei Smirnov, and for Russia, it's their first Paralympics of wheelchair curling, their alternate, Oksana Slevinorenko, very well coached team, and they won the 20, 2012 World Championships, and you look at their matches, that they played so far. Very good record of nine and one, and then in the semi-final, as you mentioned, Katie, a 13 to four victory. Let's meet Team Canada at lead, Sonia Goody, the 47-year-old from Vernon, British Columbia. At second, Dennis Thiessen. At third, Ina Forrest, the leading player amongst thirds during the round robin, and at skip. Defending gold medal champion, 63-year-old Jim Armstrong from Vancouver. And their third, Mark Idison, is the alternate on this team. Very, very strong team. And Canada looking for the three-peat. They won gold in 26 in Torino. Look at their round-robin play. And what stands out to you, uh, Katie? Well, just looking at this here, I think, uh, well, particularly there's a few few unusual results, shall we say, in there. Um, but uh, on the whole, I think they were, they really showed that they are the, they are the team to beat in this, I think, no with, doubt. The, with Canada, the record. Canada had a bit of a roller coaster. They won a game 16-0 over Slovakia. And then the next mm. game, they were down 12-0 to Finland. So a bit Quite of a surprising. roller coaster. Russia has been definitely the more consistent team throughout. And they won the round robin with a record of 8-1. and one. And that terrific record-breaking semi-final, and that's the seven points in that fourth end was quite something to watch and uh, that will help them in this match with confidence. So they had the traditionary, traditional handshakes to begin the match. The teams wished each other well in this gold medal game. Armstrong, the defending champion from Vancouver in 2010. And Russia with that better record, not even one in the round robin. They will get the advantage of the last stone in this opening end. It'll be Canada playing first and giving the last stone advantage to Russia. And let's meet the players, Sonia Goody is the lead. The Team Canada, very decorated curler, was inducted into the Curling Hall of Fame in Canada 2013. And she's the only player in Paralympic history to win two gold medals in Torino and then Vancouver. Here she delivers her first stone. As we watch it come down, the first stone of the Paralympic wheelchair curling final. That's a nice start there. That's a good start for Sonia. And she was the flag bearer 
for Canada in the opening ceremony just a week ago here right in Sochi 2014. It was a beautiful opening ceremony. Wasn't it? Yes. Meet the lead player for Russia. Alexander Shevchenko. 42 year old from Moscow. His first Paralympics. And he just squeezes out the first Russian stone there, just taking out Canada's first. And Alexander's an engineer, Baltic Naval. And Jim Armstrong, pretty relaxed guy. He just takes it pretty easy on the T line. Nothing gets him too flustered. He's the most experienced player in this entire competition, having competed in regular men's curling on a very high level in Canada for a number of years. Sonia Goody. Second stone, and each team, uh, four players, has two stones per player, eight teams per set, eight stones per side, alternating with the opposition. And how do you count in this game? Let us know there, Katie. How do you how do you count at the conclusion of the end? Oh. Well, it's the number of stones you Counting. have closest to the center than the opponent's best one. There we are. Sorry, counts. I oh, okay. didn't well, sorry. understand your question. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, yes, uh, we count the nearest <laughs> to the button, <laughs> as, it, as it's called. And it's the number of ones that one team has better than the opponent's best one, which yeah. count. Well, Russia, they have really adopted the, the use of the much longer stick. Yes, I see that. That's not all the teams, not all the teams have that length of stick, do they? No. Uh, uh, T players can throw with by hand or with the stick and all of the teams here all of the 10 teams all use the stick but different kinds some a little bit shorter mm -hmm. rushes really has gone to the longer stick where they can pull back and really come over yeah. and get rid of the uh, say, say the inertia yes get the stone moving and of course it's also known as the roaring game you know that ed oh that's a good <laughs> i like that yeah the sound of the stone as it roars down on the ice. And two hits and rolls out there for, for Alexander. And his hobby is he loves traveling. Oh, Sochi's a good place to travel. Boy, yeah. it's been warm here. Uh, it has. Palm trees abound in this area. Very temperate climate. Only snow in the mountains. And we're only a few hundred yards here from the Baltic Sea. Let's meet the second for the Team Canada, Dennis Thiessen. 52-year-old from the Winnipeg area. Canada playing a conservative first end here, where their semi-final against China was a very conservative start. Five ends is basically straight hitting. And Denny, as he's known, married to Helene with three children. And his first Paralympics when he has played in one world championship before winning gold last year, right here in right here in Sochi when they had the World Wheelchair Championships a test event. They're easing their way in nicely this first end both teams quite comfortable yes yeah, getting a feel for the ice Svetlana Pakhomova tournament accuracy 54 percent yes good percentage she takes out it's her first Paralympics and she has previously played in three worlds very experienced drink And this is really the David and Goliath today. Uh, Canada, the greatest curling nation in the world, being challenged by Russia big time. The Canadians have a lot of traveling support, I believe. Yeah, there's a lot of fans here that have followed their team. Here we go. Clearing out the house. Just nudging that one out of play. And Denny, as he's known, Dennis Thiessen, started uh, wheelchair curling in 2005 at the Assiniboia Curling Club in Winnipeg, one of 25 curling arenas right in that area. In Winnipeg, a real hotbed of curling. Bit of chat just before delivery of this stone. Concentration. Now, I really like what Russia's done with that longer stick. They really yeah. seem to be able to glide the stone back and forth with ease. 
And of course, it's not just the length of the stick, it's the handle on the end too, which grasps the stone. Yes, of course. Everybody's using a different technology. It seems every team has a little bit different variation of the end of that stick, which grabs onto the handle. And the team's looking for the best technology possible. There's a guard. Corner guard by Russia just out in front of the rings, and that mm -hmm. certainly might get things going. I wonder you must also, they must achieve a greater amount of power with the length of, of, the, of the stick as well. Well, they certainly could. I mean, uh, some people might say it might be a little bit harder to be accurate, but I don't know, mm. Russia is very, very accurate with it. So obviously, a lot of research and technology and stuff being done there. Let's meet Ina Forrest. The third for Team Canada. She leads all the thirds in the competition mm. at 61%. That might not seem real, real high, but... The ice was difficult the first few sessions and none of the players were getting very high percentages and she has just been the most consistent player. Just hangs just on at the back and even biters can count. And keeps its nose in. Yeah, any stone in the rings can be awarded one point. Comes so down to the smallest of margins. <laughs> yes, even a biter can count one. Playing in the third position. It was originally the lead when the competition started. Merit Romanov, the 43-year-old from Chelyabinsk in Russia. Very accurate thrower. Very impressed with his play. And he was part of that world championship team that won gold for Russia in 2012 in Korea. And oh, that one just nips by the guard and buries well in behind mm. the corner. At least half buried. A great shot in the Russian fans cheering on the great shot there from Merritt. Take that, and of course okay. in the wheelchair curling there's a lot more reliance on accuracy. Would you agree? Well there's no sweeping and there's no, there are no sweepers that we're like we saw in the Olympics to you know, really hold the, the line of the stone straighter or take it five or ten feet further with great sweeping power. But these players having to be more precise right at that point of release with the delivery stick. Ina Forrest with her, with her last stone of this first end. A difficult shot. As Russia has buried a nice stone in behind cover. Well, she comes up with a very nice shot as well, and the Canadian fans appreciate that. They do, they do. Some fine attire in the crowd there with the Canadians. A few jolly hats. And the skips direct traffic for their team. They call the strategy, and then when the skips throw their two stones, the vice skip holds the brim at the far end. So Merritt, Romanov, 43-year-old, playing his last stone here of the first end. He's a physical education teacher, Ural Academy of Phys Ed. And he plays out of the Granite Club in Shelabensk. Nice draw down on the back stone. That's really using the Canadian stone against Canada. Drawing down right in front of it and freezing on it. The Russian fans were super during the Olympics here at cheering for their men's and women's teams. And once again here, really the crowd is really bringing the game to the arena. It's certainly keeping the atmosphere high. Keep an eye on his two. That's a different pair, right? Eh? Yeah. 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 At times I've seen teams throughout this uh, competition, occasionally, s they swap their skip. What's your opinion of that? When things are not going so well for a team, Ed, do you think that's a, a wise move? Well, it all depends upon the team. Sometimes a lineup change does a team a lot of good, but, you know, if it's done in a good, you know, in a good way, good nature. Jim Armstrong began curling at the age of eight in Victoria in British Columbia and BC. He has played in six Briars, which is the biggest competition uh, attendance-wise in the world. Chip, and we'll leave that stone in the rings. A miss, and there we see the fans cheering a Canadian are. miss, and we knew they would do that. The fans here, they'll just... They, anything that works good for Russia, they're on top of it. No, it's not a bad thing. It's not usually the right decorum, say, to do in curling, but heck, it's, you know, these fans are unreal, and it's... Uh, no, it's like it's like golf. Is everybody supposed to not cheer? You know. <laughs> mm, yeah, there are etiquettes, aren't there? But there's uh, they're patriotic in that uh, yeah. East Cube Arena. But I would say the Russians have cheered good curling on both sides. Uh, are they? Uh, would you would you say they're a uh, well-educated curling crowd? 
Oh, no, they, they certainly haven't seen the game for a lot of years, eh? but they are certainly falling in love with curling all across Russia. And so many, I've talked with so many people on the streets and all that, are just, they're raving about okay. curling. Yes. And their teams oh. in the Olympics were strong. They didn't medal, okay. but they were strong. And, of course, this team here, right in the gold medal game. Well, let's meet the skip. Andrei Shmirnov, 40-year-old from Yakutatingburg in Russia. His first Paralympics, but he has played in seven world championships before, winning gold in 2012. So that was where Russia first proved that they could really play, winning a gold medal in the world championships. A chance here to lie two for Russia. As he judged it well. A nice stone to lie two and put the pressure on Canada. And Russia with the advantage of last stone in this opening end is looking good for two. It'll be up to Armstrong to see if he can escape with either a steal or, or hold Russia to one. Pressure's been put on, the crowd are chanting. And I would think that for Canada, they, they've been through this before, you know, playing the crowd and the other team too. It's not new to them, it's, yes. you know, but it's not a, something a curler experiences every day. And, and in curling, you're not usually too used to, uh, as Jim was, uh, for the crowd cheering a miss. It can sometimes hit you right in the heart. <laughs> <laughs> Team Canada. Well, they have lots of fans here as well in all of the crazy hats. And Jim Armstrong, former dentist, inducted into the Curling Hall of Fame in Canada in 1990, began wheelchair curling in 2007, became a consultant for this team, but now he plays. Hitting a roll over the top. Well, we don't know if that was a cheer for getting the stone out or, <laughs> or a cheer for rolling out. You can never be sure. Can never <laughs> Everybody be sure. was cheering. <laughs> well, the uh, early advantage here to rush is they've got a wide open draw into the rings for two. They could perhaps play a split on that stone close to the rings and try it for three, but it looks like it might be just a little bit too far out to to make that attempt. Perhaps if it was a bit more in the middle of the sheet, they could go for the split. And that would be knocking the stone into the rings and rolling in with their shooter as well. And Andre, who speaks both Russian and English, had the best percentage for skips. At 62%. And he is a real marksman. No sweeping here like there is in normal curling. The player has to have that weight figured out all by themselves. You have to be able to read the ice very accurately. And the Russian mm -hmm. fans love that result. The two best counters and the only two stones in the rings belong to Russia. And they take two in this opening end of play on that fine draw by Smirnov. Fans loving the start to this gold medal match. In the Russian Federation in Canada, Russia leads it by a score of 2-0. We'll have a short break as the teams have a minute to talk between ends. What do you think uh, Canada said uh, in that little break? Well, I think it was a reasonable start. I think it just does, as it often does, comes down to just one very well-placed stone, which, uh, in, well, in my opinion, it looked like that guard that went up and then lovely drawing behind at the bottom of the rings. Yeah, a good freeze in the back of the yes. rings there. Right? And uh, really, the shooter in that, that end was that Marek Romanov, the uh, third man for Russia, made two really good shots, the draw behind and then the freeze to the back. Really increased the degree of difficulty and we see that a lot in the able-bodied nowadays where it's all about how tough a shot can you give your opponent. Yes. A lot of good teams don't miss anything easy, so you have to make it really difficult for them. I really like the handle on it. It just doesn't seem that Russia is losing any grip on that stone, even though they're swinging it back and forth a lot. Yeah, Obviously, their technology is pretty good there. Yes, maybe, maybe a few other teams could be looking into that. Yeah, their boys in the lab have done a good job. Yes coming up with a very good piece of equipment for them. But there's also a lot of skill with these Russian players as well. Alexander just a hair deep, he wanted that top four foot. As one imagines yeah, to uh, gain a really good feel of the stone, the, the stick has to have a certain amount of feel so you can 
keep the accuracy. And there we see the Canada logo on the bottom of that synthetic brush. And the stone is thrown from between the rings and the first hog line. And a team player can embrace the chair. And there we see, for the lead, Sonia Goody, the balance post, which she holds onto with the other hand. It's an invention of hers. And oh. Gained her the nickname called the brain. <laughs> <laughs> She's a teacher at Okanagan College in Vernon, B.C. And listen to her resume. A gold from Trino in 06, a gold Vancouver 2010, and then three golds in the world, 09, 11, and 13, and every odd year, well, she should win in 15, I guess, too. Yes, know, yes. For worlds. That must make her the most successful yes, Paralympic wheelchair player. Yes. And this Russian team is very well balanced throughout. All very good shooters. Alexander, the lead stone, he can throw with accuracy. A nice hit there. Nice. And hang around. Just. You can see a bit of white paint there. You so can. Just out of the rings. <laughs> Alexander married his wife. Uh, Tanya and son Stanislav. 13. 13. 13. Guard, yeah. Zone two? 13, yeah. So Canada will go with the corner guard here and try to do the same thing that Russia did in that first inning. Set up a corner right. guard first. They they wouldn't go into the rings right now because Russia's just too good on the takeout. So they go out in front of the rings and hope Russia can't get rid of the guard and then Canada would hope to draw behind that guard, get protected by it, mm. and count more than one. So strategy abounds here in this second end of play. And there's that post, the balance post, which Sonia Goody holds on to. Works rather well for her. And that's the stone just in between the hog and the rings. That's a good spot. Pretty easy yes. to draw around that with nice weight. And that stone just off the rings at the back belonging to Russia could actually work against Russia, as we saw in the first end where Canada had a stone out of play at the back. Not out of play, but just out of the rings. And Russia just throws right on it, so use it. that stone could be used by Canada as backing. Well, Shmurnov, a very, very good strategist. And they've only been around for seven world championships, but they've learned this game in a hurry. Certainly have. She positions her body rather differently in her chair. Yes, she does. Yeah, Svetlana. She's married. Husband Alexander, sons Dmitri and Nikita. She works in information technology in Moscow State of Electronics. That's a nice draw. It is. A nice weight. Just didn't curl over quite enough for her. Let's see if Canada can play the hit and roll in behind the guard they just threw. Dennis Thiessen, nicknamed Denny, loves woodworking. And his motto, live, dream, and enjoy. And he's enjoyed the Olympics immensely so far. He's had a smile on his face many times, and he's only played in one world championship that last, and that was last year, right here in Sochi, and this team won gold. And he did just as you predicted. And he wanted to roll behind the corner, but at least he hangs around in the ring. And if Russia rolls out, perhaps Canada will have an advantage there and be able to draw around that corner guard. And they shot by Denny, and uh, certainly all of the people at that Assiniboia Curling Club will be watching close this gold medal match. And there's a million curlers in Canada, so probably million. a lot of them glued to their TV sets, over 800 curling clubs across the expanse of 3,000 miles across Canada. And Winnipeg definitely in that area a real hotbed of curling. You know, certainly a lot of um, Scottish players head out to Canada to, to play in uh, tournaments out there during the season. You know, the Russian fans with a lot to cheer about. Their side is playing very well. And both teams started the game with 68 minutes on their time clocks. 
both playing quite fast, 58 minutes left now, and you might ask, well, does anybody ever run out of time? Do, does anyone ever run out of well, time? Well, the answer is yes. Sweden ran out of time in the game against Canada in the round robin here. And what happens in that situation? They forfeited the game right then and there when you run out of time. And Sweden still had the one skipped stone to be delivered. They threw it, and the time had run out before they had released it, so the stone didn't count. They needed two points to tie Canada, and they never got to find out if they would have tied because the stone didn't <laughs> count. The game was forfeited. So teams like to play fairly quick early in the ends and, and bank some time for perhaps uh, some really messy ends where there's a lot of stones around and some tough decisions well, later on. And through the, this tournament, the round robin, and then the semi-finals, Eddie, looking at these teams between Canada and Russia, who have deployed the best tactics? Well, I would say that, that Russia's really caught up to Canada over the years. That Jim Armstrong is tremendously experienced because he played in Briars in Canada and all sorts of big money events over the years and played third for the famous Bernie Sparks uh, out of British Columbia for a number of years. But this Russian team has really come along fast. Very experienced uh, now, and, and uh, with that 2012 World Championship, they showed they can play. And that stone just going a little right through the rings. The man who made two great shots in the first game misses there, and now Canada will have the advantage and possibility to get around the corner guard. And it just takes an error like that for things to turn around slightly. And it was in the second session of the round robin where these two teams played, and it was a really great match. Canada won it. A score of five to four. So they're pretty closely matched, no doubt. And I think the, the, the real big thing in it, Katie, is going to be whether or not Jim Armstrong can stay with Smirnoff on the shooting at skip because Smirnoff was the top uh, point, uh, time, top percentage skip during the event. He's curling 88%. He made both shots in the first end. And Jim's struggling right now just to 25%. So, you know, that's really, I would say, the critical spot we look for. And uh, coming tight to the guard, will this play not? Looks like it just will. Yeah, stone there, by Tucked in well. Ina Forrest, the top third in this event. She's a business owner of Verna, Vernon, British Columbia, and her hero, Steve Nash, the basketball player who was in Phoenix for many years and now plays for the LA Lakers. And she's an English history major from Simon Fraser University in Burnaby. This man here has really impressed me as well, Merit Romanov III for Russia. He is very, very accurate. Attempted to just draw down to this stone, but we'll stop. No, it just keeps its legs running mm -hmm. and runs out the back door. And two That's misses. Two misses from him there. Yeah, after the great first end he played. Slight lapse in concentration, perhaps. Yeah, and it's really, uh, you know, keeping up in touch with exactly what the weight on the, on the ice is. Of course, that can vary from different parts of the sheet. It certainly could be different from the last game they played here. You know, they, hitting is definitely a little bit easier. That's just hitting the, the target, hitting the brush, and then, then figuring out the curl. But weight is really a feel. And we see the stopwatch on Denny, around Denny's neck there. All of these players time the ice to get a feel for the speed, and generally what they time is from first hog line over the second hog line. And that one is 13 seconds, dead on. So, so is that generally quite fast, or? That, well, a really fast ice is about 14 and a half seconds, means that the stone takes longer between the hog lines, but that means that it's, it's actually keener ice as it glides through that area. Less time means it races through the area and stops fast. So that's heavier ice. So 13 seconds, a good time there, and a little bit, definitely a little bit keener than we've seen in the past couple of games. And when I speak about the weight of a stone, it's not the 42 pounds which a stone weighs, although that might be nice, <laughs> nice to know. Yes. The weight refers to, it's an old term, from you mentioned this game comes from Scotland, and the weight means the force or speed put on the stone. And the stopwatch, uh, started in curling around the 1970s in Canada. And so all of the players do different kinds of timings and some do a, what's called a split timing, some do hog the stop in the ring, some do hog the hog. All means something to them. But of you know, course. <laughs> it's an ancient term that, hog line. I think it must go back to 
very early times. Yeah, so looking at two counters here now for Russia. Canada sitting pretty two good stones. That's Andre Shmirnov to skip. For Russia plays the hit. Oh. And will he get the double? Will he roll it far enough? Yes. Oh yes, sir, that extra action. And boy, when you can throw a bit extra speed, you can do a lot with a curling stone. A superb double, taking that double count away from Canada. That was a lovely shot from the skip, Smirnoff. And he has really become the all-star player of this event. And the fans really love him and his play. But in not dead for Kennedy, and if Jim could make the hit and roll behind yeah, that corner. Got away with it, tight and hard. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Jim really sees the line good, and then he had that shot figured tight and hard, and it was a good throw. But well, we need, that's one thing with Jim. Uh, in all the years Jim curled in, in Canada, he was, for being a big, strong man, he never threw real hard. He was more of a finesse player. And he certainly can't pump the weight quite as hard now, say, as Smirnoff does. Jim is more of a soft weight player. Almost a nice hit and roll, but not quite. It stays wide open. Hoping to pull that behind the guard there, wasn't he? Yeah, just had to hit a little bit less of it. He, the roll was starting, but didn't go far enough. Turn off 92% in his first three shots. It's very high. Now the player throws at the brush as a target and then calculates the amount which should probably curl, they feel, and if they know the spot. He pulls that quiver from the back and gets it ready for to be shot out of the bow. You look at the end of that uh, the long, long delivery stick. And I've never seen any slippage for Russia. I think that the end of the stick is a, is it grips tightly, but then still really releases the stone nicely. There seems to be no herky-jerky with their throws. It's very smooth. A lot of control. And who knows, uh, in the next few years, we might see the 30-foot stick, and they'll have to move the players <laughs> a lot further back, or they'll be over the hog line <laughs> with their throw. If, you th if you're over the hog line, it's a foul, and the stone's taken off. Yes, yes. A lot of power. As we were saying, he definitely has that strength. He looks like a very strong, powerful man in the upper body. Now Jim here could go for the blank, which would be the hit and roll out. No stones in the ring, so nobody would count, and Canada would retain the hammer for the next end. That advantage of last stone. Now on the other hand, uh, you know, we see that a lot in regular curling where teams blank in, so they want to keep that hammer and get at least two or three with the. Canada might just hit and stay here, take the one. We see a lot more of that in wheelchair curling where teams take the point rather than going for the blank. As Ina holds the brush as target for Jim and the fancy hats of Canada. Those curling rods. Uh, I wonder if they weigh 42 pounds or not on each year. Probably light. <laughs> I surely hope not. <laughs> They'll have a sore neck in the morning. There's the roll that Jim was looking for on his first shot. He gets it on the second one. Doesn't quite roll out to blank the end. And Canada will hit and stay for a count of one in the second end of play. Not all bad, Canada's on the scoreboard. Ina Forrest, happy with the count. She always has a smile on her face. As you say, it doesn't always seem to be quite as important to uh, uh, keep the hammer in no. the wheelchair curling competition. Definitely not, I think it's, it's much easier to steal and like with, to without the advantage of last stone. Let's listen in. Slip on so be it, but tight certainly zone one. You know, but tight, tight zone one. Okay, Ed, can you explain what was being said there in the Canadian team? Well, Canada just thinking they would like to force the action here. They they counted, so they they will play the opening stone of this third end, and they're talking about going with a guard on the center line out in front. And the best place to steal is right in front of the button area, because if you get one right on the button, to all guard it up. And the other team doesn't have much of a choice but to give you points. Hard to get at it. So Canada wants to start with that center guard. And then work their way in behind after. Yeah. 
in wheelchair curling. The first world championship was held in 2002 in, in Circe in Switzerland with the Swiss winning. And so there's been a world championship every year after that, except, except in an Olympic year, there's no world championship. In Russia, they won in, in 2012. 2012. Yeah. That's when they really announced their arrival on the wheelchair curling oh, for scene. sure. And that's area one. Just over the hog line is area one. Halfway to the rings is two. And close to the rings is three. Top ring is four. When they talk about how deep they want the stone, the button is, is five. Back, back four foot is, is, is a six to seven. Back ring is nine or ten. You just be, you know, it was a, a number system developed by uh, the Randy Furby team back in, in Edmonton, Alberta in the 1990s and everyone has copied it and really that number system has never changed it's always stayed the same because it works so good and rather than yelling out i think that stone is back for for weight for sweepers or communicating that they just say a number and when they use that system for a long time they know exactly where it is so it's just a one word message and this one goes right to the number five spot nice top ring is four and top eight foot is five so really, the, the, the angle is significantly reduced with, uh, <laughs> with the stone being placed at that point, much further up the rink. Oh, for sure, yeah. And it's much easier to draw around a real long guard as this one is too. A tighter guard is a little more difficult to draw around. Yeah. This game is on sheet C. So all of those stones have a C on the front, but then they also all have two numbers, one on each side. And this one is the number two stone, sheet C. Well spotted. No, yeah, the yellows are numbered one to eight. Leads usually throw one, two. The seconds, three, four. Thirds, five, six. Gets, uh, skips seven, eight. However, if a player doesn't like a certain stone, they could sure ask the, one of their players or one of their teammates if they'd like to change. <laughs> I, I want your stone. You can have my bad one. <laughs> I'm sure they don't get many exchanges then. Well, the skips, you know, quite often players will oblige because they don't want their skips, say, throwing a really bad stone uh. and having an excuse for missing shots. So that's where that We call that in. maybe taking one for the team. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Canada with a beautiful draw around there from Sonia Goody. She played the guard and Russia went into the top eight foot and Sonia drew right around it for shot stone. Just a beautiful piece of granite that went into the back four foot area. Will this one make its move. Oh, well, it's coming quick to it, the end. Just enough for the nice close for shot stone. It just chipped off ever so slightly. And it's a battle for the forefoot. And these are the kind of ends I really love when the teams start battling for that forefoot area. A more then, offensive type of play. Oh, yes. It's, it's definitely a lot, lot tougher shots, and you can really make it difficult on the other team if you can make some super shots. Canada looking pretty good here if they can have Denny weld one into this pocket. Just a matter of getting out the welding torch and getting the right amount of curl and speed. And they could tap this back a hair, but they'd really like to keep Russia's stone there for backing. So this one finish up. It's curling a lot from the hog line in on this side. Taps it right out. Very nice. Very effective shot, but it does leave a double now for Russia. And if that red one had stayed right in behind, it kind of takes away the double. Well, Russia leading at two to one, and they have the Evangel last stone on this end, and their, their stone is actually the safer one. It's buried in behind right now. So if Russia can crack a double here, they're looking pretty good. Svetlana with the throw. Her hobbies are boating, writing, poetry, and needlework. So she likes the, the fine stuff. wonder if this stone is poetry in motion. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Not much handle on that stone. Usually a player likes about two or three rotations. And she gets the one, but not the double. Rolls out with her shooter. And Canada shot stone at present. They're closer to the middle. And this game has got great match written all over it. it certainly does. Inches here and there. Hey, 
keeping concentration. And in events like this, Canada are sure to have a little bit of an edge with their experience, would you agree? Oh, no doubt, uh, definitely. And uh, for Denny here, he's in his first Paralympics. He's won one world championship, and he's playing with three players who have all won gold in the Olympics before. Now that's a lovely shot. Oh, it is. Very nice shot. And Canada fans enjoying that. And in the Olympics in Vancouver in 2010, Jim was the skip. And a third was Ina Forrest. And Sonia Goody was the second on that team. So three of them have won gold before. Now the rookie on the team is Dennis Thiessen. Russia not liking this center guard, which is blocking the area. Now we might talk about if we have a moment in the next end, the free guard zone, but the four guard rule, but that's no longer in effect in this end as the seconds are throwing now. So they can peel that guard off. Just a tick, didn't do much. Oh, there's a big break for Canada. The guard still there. Russia really getting nothing out of that stone. It would have been better if she had gotten by. She might have been able to raise her own. Tough break for Park Honova. And Canada with shot stolen, not too far back of the button. Able to guard it up now. Ina Forrest. Left-hander in this team, as is Danny Thiessen, the second player. Ina's married, a husband, Curtis, has three children. In Vernon, British Columbia. She loves the horses and photography as well. She began curling in Vernon in 2004, and she heard about it through a camp. And she always carries a mojo bag with her to help her with her focus. She's got the good focus. A she's leading all, bag. yes, she's leading all thirds and percentages, so it's working. It is working. A few superstitions floating around in the teams, I imagine. Well, there isn't a curler alive that isn't superstitious. <laughs> you know, you never wash your socks after you win. Oh, you wear those dear. same socks for months. <laughs> if you got a winning oh, streak. Oh, what was yours when you were playing? What was yours? Smelly well, socks? I, I put the socks on the burner one time that they're dry and they burnt. So <laughs> <laughs> Probably for the best. <laughs> a tough shot here for Russia. They need a lot of curl at the end. And Merritt made two great shots in the first end to come around in a freeze on it and then a freeze on a backstone, but was heavy on both his draws in the second end. We'll check out his weight on this one. His hobby making model tanks. Oh, nice oh, stone. Yes. Don't think he shot, Rock, but boy, that's in a pretty good position for a tap up. And his motto will win beautifully, and Russia's done a lot of that so far in this event. Certainly have. Now, when you mentioned a tap up, can you explain that to us? Well, it's uh, that stone he just threw his top four foot. It's not shot stone, but with a little intern, they could just tap that one up, move it up, promote it. About a foot right up into the button area or onto the yellow one. So Canada will guard again and try to keep that from happening. So that will be her objective with the stone. And we see with, with, the, with the part there that grasps the, the handle of the stone, a little bit more open face there on that stone. On that handle, that delivery stick, definitely different than Russia's. It is. Almost every team in this competition has had something that looked a little bit different. They must have their boys busy with the technology. Always progressing, isn't it? Always progressing in these sports. Well, you know, a lot of the Olympic associations have, you know, they have the people who work on bobsleds, they're wearing the luge, they're always trying to perfect all the different technologies. And of course, in wheelchair curling, that this, this is very big. Yeah, it's no different here. Always trying to get an edge or another. Obviously, psychology plays a big part. The mental game. Well, I think both these teams uh, are very, very good on, on the positive aspects. I know 
uh, watching Team Canada, they were really supportive of one another. And uh, uh, Ina at third really makes it easy for Jim. He's always, and this Team Canada really buys into Jim's shots. And Russia seems pretty good too. There's a lot of support for, uh, for Skip Shmurnoff. Of course, you never know with the team until they're losing, until you know exactly where. That's the telltale, you know. It's always good when you're winning. That's right. If any cracks appear, mm -hmm. and then the relationships can break down, or hopefully not. Yeah, there's a lot of chemistry involved in, in a curling team. Very much, very much. It can be an intense, uh, these competitions can be very intense. They spend a lot of time together, out on the road, different competitions. Well, we'll see what Jimbo is up to here. It looks like that intern is totally taken care of, he figures. So we'll try the out turn, see if we can sneak another counter into the button area. Perhaps steal two. Why not get a little greedy here? He <laughs> Why not? It's the Paralympic final. Well, this side hasn't been played at all during the end. Well, Jim thinking if the Russian skip makes a mistake here, why not steal more than one? This side of the ice hasn't been played at all, uh, Katie. Quite fresh and interesting to see just how much the pebble is worn down on this side of the sheet. The water droplets, which are played on the sheet before the the game, and that stone is way like uh, almost 14 seconds from between the hogs, so it just didn't have the legs. But a long guard, nonetheless, will make it tough for Russia to get anywhere near that button area where Canada has a counter. Is that something that happens quite regularly? One side of the ice gets played a lot more than the other? Uh, most we definitely. We'll, we'll just listen and see what Russia comes up with here now, which side of the ice they'd like to play. Well, decision made quickly. Could be a yellow raise onto a red stone, onto the yellow. I'm not sure from the angle we were given here just how much Andre can see of that stone. He can see enough of that yellow one. Okay. one. One just in the top rings to perhaps promote it. Canada stone onto his. Yeah. Double raise. Может сместиться? Ну давай попробуй. Ты знаешь, он хуже падает, Андрей, когда смещаешься. And Katie, I hope you understood all that. I'll get back to you. I've got a little bit of Russian, not much. My favorite words are Yanos Nai, it means I don't know. <laughs> it's probably the most useful, <laughs> although it can be confusing. Well, the top skip in the competition is facing a difficult shot here. This is a tough shot with sweeping, and without sweeping it. It's right down to the quarter inch in accuracy. And it's amazing, sometimes he throws without anyone bracing his chair. I've mm -hmm. seen that a number of times. And usually all of the players in this competition always have that extra bracing in behind them. There's a bit of movement. And they could have used maybe a little bracing there and didn't get the shot he wanted. It had a lot of ice though too. And this is very weight sensitive ice. He took a fair amount of ice, you throw a little bit too much weight and it just goes right through the curl. Just like a putt came in Cannon Golf when you're expecting a lot of break on a putt and you hit it too hard. It goes just straight, yeah. That happened to him there. And Jim will try to guard it up and take it away. And in a perfect world, he could go the other way and then place it right on the top button. But Jim hasn't exactly had the perfect draw weight the last couple of games. And Jim mentioned on in the semifinals about their game against uh, China. Yeah. And he says yeah. it was close, but I, he says, I struggled the entire game. It's a good thing the team played well in front of me. And he says, as long as I didn't have to throw a draw, I was okay. <laughs> he said with a laugh, yes. I can see here. Uh, well, Jim says his percentage has gone up ever so slightly. It's up to 45% now. Yeah, and Shmurnoff is slowly coming down with that miss and has, will face a very tough shot on his next one. Well, in a perfect world, you'd play that out turn, come around and put the stone right to the top button for shot stone and bury it right in behind. And Jim instead is, well, he knows what he can probably get. He knows that probably the out turn draw is too difficult and there's a lot of range here anywhere along this line. Pretty well does it. Oh, and you know, that might have come too close now. It could be a triple raise. 
We'll see if Russia tries that or if they play the outturn draw trying to get the single point. And Jim got the guard, but it came rather deep. Mm -hmm. Looks like Russia will play it again, adjust the broom for a better throw. Expect less curl out of this stone. As Alexander looks on. He always looks calm back there, never too flustered. Certainly. A vision of calmness. Who knows what his heart's doing in his chest, however. <laughs> well, a big shot from Russia here. And the fans are trying to get the skip pumped up for a big shot here as Andre heads down the ice. And he said the first game of the round robin here, he'd never played in front of these fans before. When he heard the huge cheers, he didn't know what it was. And then he found out a couple shots later it was for him. <laughs> and he said it couldn't kind of, you know, understand that, eh? But then he said after a while it really became a part of the game for him. He really enjoyed it. So the last shot here of N3. Russia playing a, a difficult triple raise. Yellow, yellow, red. On to yellow. Much closer than last time. And just needed perhaps a bit more weight. Won't get it. And so the best stone in the rings, and only one of them, is yellow, belongs to Canada. They will steal a single point in this third end of play and, and tie things up. A lot of rocks and play that end and it profited Canada. When you watch ends like that, it makes you wonder sometimes how something like a huge seven can actually occur. Yes, and in Russia counted seven, didn't they? They did. Yeah. In the game previous to this. Well, you can't count seven unless you get a lot of help from your opposition. Though. They're either missing or raising their stones. In. <laughs> yes. When it's cat and mouse, that's when it really hots up. Well, that might be a bit of a message, I would say, from Canada there, the team that's trying to three-peat and win the third gold in a row. They really sent a message to Russia that if we are going to play a complicated end, we know how to do it. We can match them. And we'll see if Canada just stays after that strategy. The center guard, first of all, and then coming around, beating Russia into the forefoot. Up to Sonia Goody, the lead for Canada, to make that happen. And the leads play a way more draw shots because they play the opening shots of an end and fewer takeouts generally in a game. And seconds generally play more takeouts because then the three guard zone rule isn't in effect when the seconds come to throw. And the two lines, they're 18 inches either side of the red line of that center line. The player must throw within those lines on the release. Can't go way out to the sideboards and try and catch a super duper good angle somewhere for throwing. Let's play from the center area. And when you look at the teams, they very do they very rarely change positions because they become very adept in their roles. Well, the player's card here has been just a, resolve, a revolving door for any of the teams that weren't playing well. Mm. They were always changing their lineup. And Canada was one of the teams that kind of stood pat. Well, they, they, their fifth player played a, a few games for them. Their fifth player, Mark Idison, but generally they stayed with this formation. And Russia's only had the one change, but a lot of teams were trying different combos when it wasn't working. Sometimes finding success for a game or so. It can be unsettling. Now I know like with the USA team, they changed their lineup and then finally found that one that was really working and the U.S. clocked off three straight wins in a row with that lineup towards the end of the round of the round robin. And hadn't they uh, given uh, Great Britain a five-ender in the seventh end, uh, and they were four up. Uh, they certainly warmed into the tournament, and that would explain perhaps once they got their winning formula. Yeah, that's right. You get the right lineup working for you. And, of course, sometimes coming into these competitions, you haven't played a whole lot together. Sometimes in the last month or so, you don't know who's shooting hot and who's not, who's running cold and who's running hot on your team. Sonia Goody with her last stone for her of this end. Holding on to the balance post. The brain as she is known. Loves kayaking, fishing, cross country skiing, and camping. Very Started outdoorsy. <laughs> yes, very much so. She works out eight months of the year on, on her training schedule. That works. 
And she was the flag bearer for Canada over a week ago in the opening ceremonies, those beautiful opening ceremonies. The Paralympic wheelchair curling. Well, Canada with that nice center guard. Russia, a good drawing behind, and then a corner guard. Pardon me, a corner freeze. A corner freeze there from Canada. So three good shots to open up this end. As we saw last end, that battle for the forefoot. And Canada really loves that play. It's a big shot right here, uh, even though it's only a lead stone. The shot from Alexander Shevchenko. If he can make a nice little move around on these stones and give Russia the advantage in the rings. He's not playing a takeout here, just playing to jiggle these stones around and get rid of that corner freeze that Canada has. That's a good shot. Nicely done. And Russia wanted to keep, it, keep their stones in play. Would have liked that to just curl a little bit more to gain the better angle on the top one. Red on top of yellow. It's still a good shot. And Russia's sitting not bad. Better than they were last end. About halfway through. With your curling, certainly one of these sports that the more you understand, the more you watch, the greater pleasure you get from watching it. Yes, but you know Scots, you know, they, they, they brought both golf and curling to the world. We did. Yes, so it's your fault. Yes. yes you, can blame, you can blame us. <laughs> <laughs> Could bring worse things into the world, that's for sure. The two sports that drive people crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Precision, accuracy. Yeah. Where curling started in the 1600s in Scotland on the on the locks when the locks and with the freeze in Scotland, the call would go out for players to bring their stones and play the grand match. Yes. And you know they're still doing them when they can. Well, they, they keep trying, but I think health and safety rules these days well, in Scotland don't quite allow it for be on the locks that easily. You need a good freeze before you venture yeah. out there. You don't want to, uh, you know, you don't want to be part of that picture where all the stones and you are going through the ice. Oh no, we do not. But in those days, the stones were all shapes and sizes. And now they're all uniform. But Sco easier. Scotland took curling rocks all over the world. And they did their home settlements. Scotland first brought curling to Russia here in 1905. But then it didn't do much for a lot of years after that. And it was in the 1990s that when Russia curling really picked up again. And the women's team was very strong for a lot of years. Uh, the women's team uh, has won Europeans, uh, won a World University Championship for, for Russia. But the men's team, oh, they're in the, played here in the Olympics just a few weeks ago. What powerful players, some of the strongest sweepers I've ever seen in the world. And uh, give them a few more years, and they're almost there. Challenging for top in the world. Danny Thiessen with his out turn, the left-hander would like to hit to stay. Just, oh, he just squeezes that by his back one. And Canada line three. And Russia has the advantage of last stone. And so when you look at the stones in the house at the moment, they're rather spread. What sort of tactic would you be looking to employ here? Well, the key Russia's thing here still is that center guard. Either team can get one buried really nicely, the top four foot, say, that blue circle right at the top four foot. That would be key. Looks like Russia's playing the hit here, so the battle for the four foot isn't really on yet. But certainly could be as we go later in the end. That center guard is definitely a factor. Whoever can get in behind that guard. A nice hit and rolls a little bit too far past it. And Russia loves that though, the hit and stay. Just make yellow things go away. <laughs> <laughs> and they shot by Svetlana. <laughs> Serena really alive today. It certainly is. It's it's a great atmosphere in there. And the other thing we see in, in wheelchair curling that we don't in regular curling is the assistants in the beautiful, beautiful, colorful jackets of Russia. They help out with the play, help to clean the stone off with a cloth and then get it ready for the player. So 
And they bring the stone out and they help the speed play. And at the conclusion at the end, they help to move the stones out of play. Although in regular curling, it's all left up to the players to do that kind of stuff. And nice hit and stay for Canada, line three. Boy, it's a real battle between uh, the fans up there in the stands. Because they're trying to outvoice each <laughs> other, certainly adding to this occasion. Well, we'll just see what Russia plays here. They could ignore all three stones in the ranks and play a draw in behind that center guard and try to get hidden. See if they do that, if they play the hit and stay. The greatest shot, if you could carry it down there and put it in behind that center guard, you'd play that, but it's a riskier shot. And you're leaving all the opponent's stones around and they might count. Romanov at the out turn takeout. Might roll in behind the corner stone. Oh, that's pretty good. And it is shot stone. It's the best counter in the rings. Looks like it peeked out its nose out the right hand side. There's, I would say partially behind cover. Nice shot. Yeah, he's up to 50%. And there's that Ina Forest. Wow. The top third in the competition. Leading the way today. And three, three front end, three first players for Canada. Sonia, 84%, Dennis, 81, Ina, 82. And Jim Armstrong struggling with it, 54. And Jim getting great support from his players in this game. They were really shooting well in front of him. Seems to be coming around nicely. And the hit and roll out, not, that's not a big deal to roll out. The main thing was to get rid of that shot stone. Canada's still lying too. Well, we've witnessed, witnessed 47 matches over the past David. seven days David. in Paralympic curling, and a lot of them have been really super matches. We've seen some blowouts. It was amazing that Canada had that one game against Slovakia where they won 16-0 in the next game against Finland were trailing 12 nothing, so what a, you know, it's a roller coaster. And Canada looking for the three-peat here, and Russia saying, no, sir, you can't do it. We're around. <laughs> I think sustaining a high level throughout the entire competition is tough for these teams. That's well, where some of the inconsistent results perhaps come from. Well, Canada, an older team, they're 50 years uh, average of age. Whereas the youngest team, China, 28 year average. Oh, there's a penalty for dropping your brush. Okay. One point penalty. <laughs> <laughs> Jim heads down to play his stone. Now he's, uh, he'll finally have a chance uh, to draw behind that center guard. Probably something that Russia should have attempted. And that's really experience, knowing sometimes when to quit defense and go on the offense. Russia could have done that this end. And here now, Canada has the opportunity without any risk beat Russia in behind that center guard. And Jimbo the thrower, and Ina holding the brush for him, it's on its way. Jim said, just don't give me a draw. But he made a really good one in the last game. Had to make one against China in the eighth end or he might have lost. We can wait here and see if this one finishes and buries in behind. Oh, a nice shot by Jim. Not so Russia should have gone earlier. And now they are the chasers. As Jim got in behind that center guard first. Well, he's throwing a number seven, probably seven, eight on the sheet. Some encouragement from the Russian crowd here for Anders Mayer. You can't see much of that stone, so there's no way for him to get buried. But probably if he doesn't strike it, roll open. And he's probably saying to himself right now, why didn't I draw around there first with my third man stone? Both skips now are quite even in the percentage. 63 for Smirnoff, 61 for Armstrong. Yeah, Jimmy's bringing up his average. That was a good shot by him right there. And it might be a good telltale for him. He's finally found draw weight. Well, let's see if Russia can rebound in this end. They gave away the steal last end. 
And Smirnoff was the top skip during the round robin. He had his chair held there. Did you notice? Yeah, sometimes yes and sometimes no. Yes, it was. And he just breezes by and just buzzed the tower, so to speak, and didn't get anything. A big advantage here for Canada is they can do it again. Why not put another one in behind? Jim heads down the ice, looking to do just that. And he's been here before, he's been in this situation. Perhaps this is going to count for something as we go deeper into this match. So during the round robin, in all of their games, Canada scored 66 and gave up 42. So they were a plus 24 in there, four and against. They, let, they were in first place, but Russia was right in behind, 60 scored and 38 given up for a plus 22. So these two teams showed why they're in the finals. They both can score well, they both got a strong defense. Jim Armstrong, the former dentist from Vancouver in Canada. Again, wheelchair curling in 2007, inducted into the Curling Hall of Fame in Canada in 1990, and well, he just duplicates that first shot. A very nice shot, just to the top, almost touching the button. And that will make it super tough for Russia. Well, Canada's really cranked it up with that center guard game. And that's the beauty of curling. If nothing else is working, you can sometimes use that free guard zone and go to the draw game, and if you can beat up on a team on the draw game, that's where the game can be won, and then you whoa, use your hitting for defense whoa, whoa. later once you've got the lead. Well, Jim did roll a, just a little bit open. I don't think there's enough there for Russia to get shot stone, though. We'll see. You get a better view. Yeah, possibly. Comes close to the guard, but when you come close to the guard, the risk of touching the guard and giving up three is in the works, too. So Russia have to be very precise on this stone. But there's a precise man throwing it, Andrei Smirnov. Comes out of the Rodna Club in, club in Yekaterinburg, Russia. And a big shot for him right here. Throws big weight and was the outside the broom. He seemed to flick that a bit at the end on the end turn. See if it curls over enough for him. It's definitely in the ballpark. Gets the hit. Will he stay with his shooter? No, rolls right out. And it will be a score of two. Canadian fans go wild. They're enjoying this match. It's very tight. And the Rockheads go wild. The Rockheads. Is that their official title? <laughs> the Rockheads. Maybe that's uh, curling's equivalent of petrol heads. Canada jumps into the lead, stealing one on the end before this and a third in, and now stealing two more. Canada says, we don't need the hammer in this game. We'll just score without it. Leading it four to two after four full ends of play as we hit into the fourth end break. And Canada smiles now. They trailed it two nothing early, but it's looking better. Is, is looking slightly better for the Canadians now. I think a slightly tense, more tense start from them, but they're they're well into this now. And it might be a shaky time for Russia. You know, they seem to show a lot of nerves after they got the two nothing lead. And I think it was a couple of shots from Romanov that made the difference.
we look at the Russian Federation and their percentages in this game. And they were looking really good. Shmurnoff at skip was coming in 80% at one time, but now he's dropped down to 50% with a few misses in the last couple ends. And boy, two ends can sure th turn things around. Certainly can. I think uh, there were a few few signs of nerves on occasions there from the from the Russian team, despite starting very well. Their coach, Anton Betugin. And Shmurnoff seems a little bit angry at himself right at this. You know, see if he can calm down. It's a little perturbed. Hopefully the coach can settle their, them down. Yeah, let's just keep keep a handle on things and a lot of ends left here yet. We look at Canada. Jim Armstrong improving to 66%. He was 25% after the first end. And we'll look at the three players, uh, the good play in front of him. Oh, 84, 81, 84, all above their average during the week. High Canada percentage. having, yeah, just a, a super game. And pleased for Dennis Thiessen there, the second in his first gold medal game in the Olympics. He's the rookie on the team. The other three have won a gold medal in Vancouver. But he's fitting right in beautifully. And their coach, Joe Ray, fifth player alternate is Mark Ideson. And if Canada continues to play that way in the first three positions, it makes it difficult for Russia to build an end. It certainly will, and I think they've uh, they've risen to the occasion well, and I think we've still got a lot of interesting curling to come here. And the stat that really stands out on draw shots, Canada, 79%. That's the key one, I would say. They took Russia to the draw game the last couple wins, and they beat up on Russia on that draw game. And that's what's winning them the match so far. Yeah, take it, yes. yeah. Canada with that big steal of one in the third and now two in the fourth. A 4-2 lead. A lot of curling to be left yet though. Four ends left of regulation play in this match. In this gold medal game since Sochi Russia. Paralympic curling in 2014. Canada looking for the three-peat. Can they do it? Oh well, Russia will certainly do their best to try and stop them in their tracks. We're Take hearing. their first gold medal Paralympic wheelchair curling gold medal in their first games. Well, we're here at the ice cube in Sochi, Russia. Four sheets of curling ice here, but one covered over right now. And Canada really full marks the last couple of ends. And it started right from lead. Sonia's had really, I think, her best match in positioning stones, really getting those center guards in good spots. And in the middle of the lineup, Denny and I know they've really played well. Jim has been able to be aggressive with his stones because he hasn't been in trouble at all. And he's played well. He buried two good stones in that last end. So they are all coming to life. And that's what they came here for. They said they were shooting for gold when they came here. And Canada, the top curling nation in the world, and since the Men's World Curling Championship on the able-bodied side started in 1959 when the first world championship was held, Ernie Richardson from Canada won that over Scotland, and there was only two teams in the first World Championship back in 59. And since then, Canada has been the top nation. They have won 34 World Championships on the men's side, so definitely the top curling nation in the world. And every once in a while, if somebody manages to knock them off, though, there's a lot of good curling countries in the world. And just imagine, I mean, last year it was Sweden on the men's side winning the World Championship. There's a lot of good teams, and... Uh, now that curling is an Olympic sport and a Paralympic sport, a lot of great curling teams over there. Well, they're the, they're over the, the target world. team, aren't they? Nations always look to them and to look to try and topple them. This feels very nip and tuck, doesn't it? You don't get the impression there'll be any necessarily any high scoring ends. Well, here, we, this stage. Here, here we go now, Canada with the two point lead. They decided not to go out in front of the rings with this stone. They, they played in first. They're figuring that Russia will oh, throw the corner say. guard because Russia needs some offense here now. They can't just hit. So they play the corner guard, and then Canada's figuring to guard that stone of theirs. Now we can talk free guard zone. The stone. Oh, they played a hit. They really fooled me here. I thought they were going corner guard with some offense, and although the fans love that shot, it doesn't get them much offense right now. It's gonna be, it could be a hidden game in the rings. So we'll talk free guard zone. 
next couple ends where we see it happen. Sonia Goody, 88, 86% leading all the players on both teams. And she will grab onto the balance post with her left hand. I think that's a good idea. It really gives the person a bit of a bracing. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, I would think more players would adopt that. The inventor of that, I wonder if she sells it and how much she charges. Well, I wonder. <laughs> the brains. <laughs> she could make some something from it. Nice hit and roll. This is definitely her finest game through the round robin in the semis. Okay. Playing a super game today. And she's 100% on her takeouts. Well, see if Russia plays the hit here or goes corner guard. And they were too tentative last end. And they should have gone around that guard. But their coach, I would think, might have said, okay, let's use some patience. We don't have to go gambling right away. There's four ends left, so perhaps one easy end to kind of keep things close. And then but sooner or later, running out of ends, they'll need to gamble. I don't think they'll get any wide-open misses from Team Canada. And by a wide-open, I mean with no guards around, just a wide-open takeout miss. Indeed. And that's why you have to increase the degree of difficulty for the opponent to try and force a miss. crowd like that one as well. Yeah, Jim Armstrong doesn't mind that though. I mean, uh, he's up two points and he figures, well, if Russia wants to just play it wide open with us and maybe the end of the <laughs> score at the end of the game will be 4-2, well, they're not that. coming after us right now. Russia's trailing, but they aren't going after Canada. Thiessen with big numbers, 81%. Two lefties for Canada in the middle of the lineup, carrying big numbers today. Looks like Canada just isn't going to miss anything easy. The Russians will have to get out the strategy chart and figure out how to go after them. I would think in this end, perhaps Russia was just thinking, well, let's wait for a, a rollout from Canada. If Canada rolls out, then we can throw a corner guard. That hasn't happened. Perhaps always a mistake waiting to see what the other teams will do. Take it to them. Now, curling is the only team sport in the Paralympics where there must be most gen where both genders play on an open playing field, an even playing field. And there must be one of each gender on the ice at all times. So most teams carry, say, three of one gender and two of the other, just in case ones get sick, they always have a replacement, an alternate. And can a chance here to lie too. And I have to take a, an opportunity here to have a little bit of fun with Jim because in, in the semifinal game, uh, Jim was busy watching the other game and it wasn't paying attention to his own and then asked for a takeout on a stone and the three players had to stop and say, whoa, that's our rock in the rings. <laughs> well, it's funny you say that because I was just about to ask you when the skip perhaps makes a decision the rest of the team don't agree with. Uh, well, it's time to stand up and be, be counted. Yes, yeah. it's, it really is when it counts that much. But uh, on the whole, are, are there many disagreements? Oh, not too many, but... You know, it really depends upon every skip. Some skips are very, very open to suggestion, and I would say Jim certainly is. And whenever his players talk, he listens. But, you know, the skip uh, makes the final decisions on the team. But a lot of decisions are made by committee where everybody has their input and then leads to a decision. Certainly, I think the, the days of curling where the skip was just an absolute general are certainly gone. Oh you know, there's yes. a lot of experienced players around, and, and they like to curl on a team where where they have some input. Two minds are better than one, aren't they? Yeah. Russia trying something aggressive here now, the freeze, realizing that the takeout game wasn't working real well, so they wanted to draw right in front of Canada and use that Canada Stone's backing. Beautiful weight, and didn't curl over quite enough. At least it's a, it's a step in the right direction to go after the offense. 
A lot of times in Kroning, you like to use the opponent stolen against them. If they throw a guard, you draw around. If they play one on the back rings, you draw down and freeze on it. Make it much more difficult for them to remove your stone, called increasing the degree of difficulty. Ina, Ina at third for Canada. A business owner, an English history major. When she went to university at Simon Fraser in Burnaby. Really playing great numbers. Hit and stay. Loses her back one, but still a very nice hit. Probably didn't want two stones back there, particularly if Russia's drawing into a pocket. Russia will once again play the draw to the back stone. I like this call. They're finally getting aggressive. They can make a real good freeze into this stone. It worked for them in the first end. That's how they got their two ender to lead the game. And Russia with 34 minutes left on their clock. Started with 68. Merit Romanov, third player, playing the out turn, but that was coasting without a handle. It will come into the top four foot area. Canada will have to be careful that they don't drive it and leave it on their own. Canada definitely playing the hit because that is shot stone. As Ina goes through her routine, she always sets up and has a look at the shot and then brings out the stick, the delivery stick, positions it. And we see she even uses a stopwatch on, on her chair there. When she's sitting, she times a lot of stones that the other team is throwing. So stopwatch really a big part of curling. I see, yes. Players are always timing stones. Tells you a lot about the ice, obviously. And it has nothing to do with how old a stone is. <laughs> Does she get it through the hole? Yes, she does. Rolls away. Canadian fans. Uh, the Rock Kids, as I name them. That's why I didn't go come over the face of it. And would uh, these uh, group of curlers, they talk a lot about the ice. I mean, that seems like an obvious question, but is it something that people talk about good ice, bad ice, and that kind of thing? Oh, for sure. And th this ice here is very, very good. Uh, Beautifully made ice. And sure, you get sometimes where the ice is heavier for weight, lighter for weight. Sometimes you get slanted ice that curls all in only one direction and not the other, so you end up playing just on half of the sheet. Master ice technicians, Scott Henderson here from Edinburgh. Yes, a beautiful ice given to us by Scott. Does a great job. Takes a lot of time. Well, with the, with the machinery for ice making nowadays, the technology has become much better for machines like the scraper, the nipper, all those kinds of things used nowadays. A lot of top-notch ice. Okay, Jim. Make it go away. Make it go away, yeah. That's a technical term. Yeah, the, bo all of these players on this team really understand what's going on very well. They don't have to talk it over a ton unless there's really a tough situation. They all understand it very well. Even I can understand that. We'll make it go away. Jim Armstrong with his game accuracy, 66% now. And Jim with his finest game that he's played in a while, but whoa, a miss there. And the crowd goes crazy as Jim nails his own stone at the back and misses the red one. Got a little bit outside that target broom and just had it run straight on him. Little shake of the head. That was a bad miss for him. Yeah, it was. Uh, Canada really was rolling in this game. And Jim all of a sudden got it out wide of the brush and it didn't move for him. And maybe he can blame the ice makers for a quarter second. But <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> Beautiful ice here provided by Scott Henderson of Edinburgh, Scotland, and Joachim Fritz of Baden-Baden in Germany. Those two gentlemen, the professional ice technicians, made the ice here last year for the World Championships here at the Ice Cube last January. And it was Jim Armstrong at that time that won the final. A 
Now Russia here can just play the draw or the tap back. Definitely if they're hitting, they do not want to roll away. This is their opportunity to get back in the match. And that draw down in front, although it wasn't a perfect freeze, worked out pretty good. A little bit shaky on the release again. I haven't, he's been throwing very smooth, but not in this game. Almost like he's throwing with the jitters. And runs right past that stone. That could have been just maybe a soft draw tap back. Didn't have to be the hard hit. A couple nope. of misses from the skips there now. Yeah, and of all the matches I've watched, this is the first time I've seen Smirnoff be shaky in his throws. He's been very smooth, hasn't he? Yeah. And his release, his release is just bothering him right now. I hope he's okay. He's not that he isn't, you know, feeling bad for some reason. I've never seen him like this before. He's hey, very smooth. Perhaps the occasion. Well, just full edge and maybe a little hard, but yeah. yeah. yeah you're Armstrong has a chance to redeem himself. It's another chance at the same shot. He does not want to overcurl because it could drive it on his back one. So that was it on his first one. He was trying to make sure he hit it on that pro side on the brush hand side, but ran right by it and missed. This time, Goody says it looks better. Two full rotations. We'll chip it out and roll away, but the main thing made it go away. Russia goes from having a chance for two, and now they're looking at two Canadian counters. And they hit or draw, and the hit hasn't been really good in the last couple of shots for Smirnov. Highly entertaining match so far. Oh, it's been a great match, and it would have been, I think, even greater had Russia been able to pick up the two here and tie it up. And Canada didn't really pay the price for that miss of theirs. There we see the striking band on the side of the stone. These stones come from the Isle of Elsa Craig, 10 kilometers off your home in Scotland. It's beautiful out there, yes. And I, I say, uh, what I hear is that uh, these, uh, the granite actually grows on the beach there. <laughs> <laughs> and it's harvested and loaded onto barges. And granite trees. Uh, yes, uh, taken to the mainland where they go to the factory and they start out as big blocks, but then they're chiseled and honed down to the beautiful curling stones they are. They're green, uh, gray trevor. The striking band is a little bit tougher area. That's the area that strikes the other stone. And blue home granite on the bottom of the stone, which is the running edge, which touches the ice. Smoother delivery there from Smyrna. He'll hit. Oh, just barely clips it out. And Russia down three now. Another steal by Canada. Canada just ha hasn't needed the hammer in this game. He just continued to steal. And Murnoff pretty disappointed with himself. And he's feeling the jitters on him. It's the pressure it's of this game. I think so. It's a, it's a huge occasion, and uh, the pressure from the crowd, I mean, we talk about how the crowd can help, but I do think it can sometimes... Oh, no doubt. ...make, yeah, have an adverse effect, and he'll maybe need to try and shut things out and really get his, his mind back on track. Well, you know, having played in World Champions, I always say that players... And when players have struggled, I have sometimes said to them that you have to actually still play this game for yourself. If you start playing for the crowd, or if you start playing for your country only, it becomes a huge responsibility on your shoulders. Sometimes you have to just narrow it back down to the fact that it's a curling game, you've played for yourself for basically the entire life, and now you're into a different role. And, and some people, are, you know, they need the experience of handling it more. That's where the Canadians have got a little bit, a little bit more experience. Certainly, Jim Armstrong and uh, a few of his other teammates. Yeah, they've been through this role many they times have. in World Championships and, and been through the Olympic thing. So far, they're looking. They are looking the steadier. The more poised they are. The, the more poised team. Yeah. Yes. And a couple of games ago, I wouldn't have said that. I thought that Russia was looking by far the better team. They came out very strongly and. Uh, Yes, just a slight. There's been a, there have been a few wobbles. Let's see if Canada keeps up the fine play, the consistency. And it has been Sonia Goody leading the way, and she really has found her draw weight today. She positions in center guard, so we're beautiful. And, oh, she's got the great weight today. She just owns that area. Let me see. Team from, from Sweden, yes. Четыре. Oh, I'm 
pretty sure this time we will see a, a corner guard from Russia. But who knows, they've been a little bit rattled with the strategy too. Changing tack halfway through one of the ends as well, didn't they? Well, this one will be a guard out in the free guard zone. Must make it over the hog line, it does. Otherwise it would move from play. And when the hog line, certainly an old Scottish term from curling back in the 1600s, the rings are known as the house. And, uh, playing the even in, the sixth end is known as coming home. Coming home. You know, I do believe there was a curling stone that was found underneath, I think, a loch when it was drained, and it had the inscription of 1511 on it. Wow. Even earlier, apparently. Not before I played, so <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Although some people might not think that. <laughs> oh, Ed, you're not that old. The Rock Heads, their things are going good for their team out there right now. As the Brain has really figured out a good game for herself here today. She holds onto that balance post and she's had great draw weight the last couple ends, really starting the ends out. And Canada has been able to play the exact strategy they want in every one of these ends because of that very good positioning. Well, there is a, it's a good shot, but it's a pocket. And we'll see if Russia will freeze the stone in on that pocket. That would be a good shot, freeze right in there. It's almost impossible to get out. And then you worry about getting rid of the yellows later. Right now, Canada has to look, pardon me, Russia has to look for anything where they can get stones protected that Canada can't remove. Looks like they'll go around the corner here that they played up in front. Alexander Shevchenko. Played a nice guard. See if he has enough weight to draw around it. Well, nicely by the guard, will it have enough weight to trickle into the ring? And just short a couple of feet. And Canada counting two. With a lead of three in this game, they lead it by a score of five, two. Could go out front now, that was the four stone of the end, and the free guard zone no longer in effect. They could go peeling. They could go guard hunting and get rid of those guards. Try and peel them up, but no, Canada will stay aggressive. Shevchenko's leading, lead, leading his percentages of his team, 71. Well, this game far from over, and when Canada won the gold medal in Vancouver in 2010, they led Korea by a score of <coughs> eight to one after four ends and held on to win at eight seven. It wasn't an easy victory. But things can happen in a hurry. And Canada flying into their own pocket, well, I wish you could play it for those stones too and get protected for a moment. Well, all of Canada really cheering crazy, crazy, crazy for their team right now because everything is going Canada's way. They're looking relaxed as well. They're quite enjoying enjoying themselves. Well, that's definitely the moment they came to play. It was the moment they were looking forward to coming into these Olympics. And perhaps it was a relief for them just to get to this final and, and you know, know that they're there. They definitely had a very tough yeah. match with China. A 5-4 yes. match in the, in the semifinals. But it looked like China might count two to tie and might even get three in the last end to win. It was a tense one, that's for sure. Slavenka, back to Mova. Information technology is her field. And the Moscow State of Electronics. Well, that's a nice shot, hit and roll, and just a freeze right onto the Canada stone. That's Russia's best stone for a little while. And a nice shot by Svetlenka. The crowd loves it. Hopefully that will help to loosen up the, Rus the Russian team a little bit. And hopefully the Canada Rock heads are cheering for that shot too. It's a good one. And you have to appreciate curling, even the, even the opposition stones. And see what Dennis Eason is playing here. They could play a guard, Canada could, or they could play to rip that out. Very difficult stone to get out of the rings now. And looks like Canada will just try and protect. Dennis and his outturn. And clockwise rotation. Pretty good guard just in front of the rings. 
And Russia thinking, how do we get that Canadian stone out? Is decent get high fives from his teammates. And Henri Smirnov said coming into this event about playing gold medalist Canada, two-time gold medalist, he said, for all of us, it's a huge, big game. It was a dream, and now it's a dream come true. We want very much to beat Canada in the final. Maybe too much. He really, you know, he's put a lot of pressure on himself. It does feel slightly that way. But as you say, things can change very quickly in this sport. Now, one good shot can turn it around here. Russia, I would think, here just playing a corner freeze, trying to set up shot for, for their next stone. Looks like quite a bit of weight. Perhaps they're playing the chip that guard off. She played a very good last shot. Not just that guard, but because it was almost frozen with theirs, it stays guarded. But lucky for her, she rolls into the rings for a third shot. And we expect Canada to hit that and not let an end build up here against them. And Canada protected behind the guard right now. That's problem kind of taken care of for them so they can wail away on this open stone. No, I said all the fibers. Wailing away, that's an old Scottish term. Okay. Check it out. <laughs> you can blame most things on the, on the Scots for this sport, can't we? <laughs> well, Iana Forrest will check on her percentages. Feeling a cool 83%, 90% on her hits. Just proving to everyone who's watching that she has been the top third all the way through the event. And she's coming up with the goodies again today. Mm -hmm. The hit. And a perfect little roll, little nudging behind. That won't hurt. How good is that? Very nice shot. I know the gal whose motto is never ever let them see you not smiling. And she smiles a lot. She it's does. A, a nice great attitude. Marit Romanov, the 43-year-old from Shelabensk in Russia, was a member of that gold medal winning team in 2012 when they won the gold in Korea. Works in physical education and his hobby, and as I mentioned, is making model tanks. And he'd like to get out a tank right now and get rid of some Canadian stones. And the one in the row, and boy, that stone of Canada's behind the guard is so well protected. And Canada's pretty safe in this end as of the moment. You have to feel pretty comfortable with the 5 2 lead and the stone buried in behind the guard. Very nice position to be in. Yeah. It's hard when you're chasing the match. The Russians have been in that position for some time now. Romanov, 64%. And Ina Forrest just continuing to pile the shots on. And the lead second and third for Canada just with a great match today. And Armstrong's played well, except that fan on the last end has made some good draw shots. I know with a little bit of trouble on that release and seemed to slip on her a bit, but wow, look at this shot. Once again, she rolls to the center button area. I don't think it's behind cover, but the pressure was to miss. It's certainly a good stone for Canada guard. And Russia just not knowing what hit them so far in this game. The Canadian team just piling on the shots. It's been rather reactive by the Russians rather than proactive. Yeah, it's, yeah right. The uh, strategy's been a little tough for them and then chasing Canada on these last few wins. Well, that stone is partially behind cover. So it's not real easy to get at. And difficult to just stay right there. Well, Russia could play a draw to it, but if, as I mentioned before, a draw is a really tough, tough shot when you don't have the advantage of sweeping to really position that absolutely perfect that five or ten feet which you gain from really powerful sweepers and they warm the path in front of the stone it really makes a huge difference. And a, a breeze right by, by Russia. Well, they've had misses at the at the back end today. 
from Marit Romanoff and from Andre Schmerner. Uh, Something we hadn't seen from them in any game. But Canada can just think? about lock the deal here. A real good guard. Jimbo must be feeling pretty good about the situation right now. About Canada's chance to three-peat. Certainly more confident now than number eight. Yeah. Before. Well, had. the way this game was being played, or the way these two teams were occurring coming into this, I thought that it would be yeah, Canada would really have to try and just stay with Russia and look for a break. Uh, Canada went after Russia in the middle ends with a draw game and outplayed Russia, and that's really been the difference. And I think they kind of sent a statement to Russia is that when it comes to the big end, uh, when it comes to that four-foot game, you can't stay with us. And that's been the difference. Uh, the master technician of tactics and strategy, Jim Armstrong, has skipped a masterful game. He's gone for things at the right time. A guard here would look good for his side. Might be over curling just a hair. It might not have worked out that good. If I was Russia now, I would bang that stone that Jim just threw and not even worry about the shot stone. But th that's, they could maybe get rid of that troublemaker rock behind the guard, which has been pounding them on the head this whole end. That's been the trouble rock. Bit of discussion there, so if they come away with your thought. Both teams started with 68 minutes on their time clocks, and they've played a pretty fast game. Each team has a, the availability of one time out, where they could have their coach come to the ice surface to talk strategy. They stack it up so for times like this, they can take a little bit more. And the Russian fans just ready to explode if their team can make a real big shot for them. Perhaps just that's maybe what they need to lift them slightly. Well, there's two possibilities here. If Shmurnov was to nail that yellow one at the top, which he can see a little bit and get rid of that trouble rock, he'd have second stone in behind the, the guard, and he would say to Jim, can you guard your shot stone? If Jim couldn't, he would have a shot for two. You play the freeze into the button instead. This is also a very good call. It's the kind of shot he probably should have played in other ends where he's overthrown on his hits. You know, sometimes a player gets into a, a rut and thinks, well, I can win everything with a high, hard hit. But really, it's the soft shots that win, often win a game, the finesse shots. Like you said, Jim Armstrong has built his career around the, more of the finesse shots. Well, the high, hard shot really can make a difference sometimes, but it's just got to be the right moment. And on that release right now, he's kind of flipping the stick at the end rather than following it. straight through the target. You know, that comes from, I think, he's really trying to put a lot of spin on the stone. This is looking pretty good. Nice stone that rolled off into the open. Needed just a foot less weight for the perfect corner freeze. And I really have a lot of admiration for all these players, the way they are able with that stick to get the, the turn on the stone. It must be, I would think, much easier with just the hand, normal throwing hand. Of course, of course. Uh, with and stick. you're much lower to the ice, and yeah. uh, when you've got that height being up in the chair. Well, we saw earlier in the week when this ice was softer and uh, the rock stones were curling about four and a half feet, when all the teams were struggling, and even Canada and other teams were struggling to keep the turn on the stone. Because the ice was very soft. There was a lot of flat handles happening, and the... Stones losing their turn. We haven't seen much of that in this game. The ice conditions have been, the surface has been nice and cool. Really, it hasn't been, I would call, sweaty ice or soft ice. Ouch, Jim. And he snapped his wrist on that. And I'll tell you a story in a second here after we see the, what happens with the stone. And Jim gets a good hit, so it didn't bother to throw him. In the old days of curling, there was a, an item used called the corn broom, and it, a person really had to snap it hard. And Jim, in his younger days, was one of the hardest corn broom sweepers in Canada. He swept so hard that on one stroke one time, he actually snapped and broke his wrist. Couldn't play for five months because he was out with a broken wrist from sweeping a curling rod. That's dedication, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> that's, that's so almost maybe that was the same wrist, you never know. 
But he sure made a good throw, even though he dropped the stick. It didn't seem to impact anyway, that's, that's for sure. Well, there is no triple possibility due to the angle. And Russia can only get one here. But it would be an important one to get back on the board. And there is no triple, not the way the angles are sitting. So although they would like to count two, they'll have to settle for one, but it's not a given. Shmurnov will have to settle down that in turn of his. Now we find in wheelchair curling, and you might ask the question, which turn do players prefer? Well, in regular curling, in the able-bodied, the best curlers in the world, after all, do prefer their out turn slightly. And that's simply because of the way the hand is set up with the wrist. Easier to, uh, to apply the out turn smoothly to the stone. Now in wheelchair curling, it's the in turn which is more proficient for the players with the stick. The out turn is more difficult to get the handle on. So all of the teams generally through the competition through about 300 in turns and about 200 out turns, preferring their in turn and having more success on it. And that generally seems to be across the board. Now, it certainly could vary from player to player. Yeah. Well, a big shot here for Russia to stay alive. And make this a curling game. And stone from the delivery stick of Andrei Shmurnov. Needs to hit and stay to get one. And he just chips the top and rolls away. Had missed his last few interns wide. That one on the narrow over curling side. And count them up. One, two, three yellows. Belonging to Canada. And now jumping across that scoreboard. With a huge eight to two lead. And the three-peat is alive and well for Canada. That was quite a blow there for the Russians. You okay there, Jim? Could be difficult to know. <laughs> claw back at this stage in the match. And this Canadians can have a, a big smile. No kidding. And uh, they asked if Jim was okay with his wrist after that throw. And uh, many, many skips in regular curling have been asked that after a real bad throw. Is your wrist okay? <laughs> <laughs> with a hint of sarcasm, perhaps, sometimes. In, that, in this case, certainly not. He did. He dropped his stick uh, after that delivery, but he seems to be all right, doesn't he? Well, this might be the final game for the year for them, unless they have uh, you know, a few competitions on, so Jim would have some time to recover. We'll, we'll see if Canada starts throwing through now. What will be going through the mind of Andrei Smirnov then? Yeah, it's been a tough match for him. He just... He's down to 40% now after being 80%, and I would say out of about his last six shots, he's made maybe one. He's really had a drastic streak of just of falling apart, basically, for him. It can happen if you play this game long enough, crazy things happen. And he's having one of those days. Canada just throwing this stone through. They'll play defense to this end now, not wanting to give Russia any stones to work with. And for Canada, they could stay on the offense. I mean, they're leading at eight to two and they got there with offense, but now they have enough points that they can probably just try to eliminate. They have a six point lead and Russia only in these final two ends has 16 stones left to score six points. It's a tall order. It is by anyone's. Estimations. Expect Russia to play a stone out in front here into the free guard zone. And I, w I think Russia would really like to start this game over again. I mean, Shmurnov was the top skip throughout the entire event, and now uh, now he's not playing a good game. Both leads playing well. I've been very impressed with Alexander in this match. He's had excellent draw weight. Yeah, very steady player. And if you're looking to build a team, I mean, of course, you need good players at all four positions. They're very steady. You can never be quite sure how it's going to feel to be uh, at an occasion like this for the first time. Yeah, it's definitely a big moment for Russia and perhaps this whole deal of playing in front of their hometown fans 
being the host country, having a packed arena pulling for them. As I said, sometimes you can play the game for the wrong reasons. And certainly uh, playing for your country and pulling, you know, is not the wrong reason, but sometimes it's just too much pressure. Sometimes you have to change the thing around, think about it in a little bit simpler terms. Still play the game for yourself and your teammates. The focus goes outwards rather than back in. I think Canada's done a great job of handling it and you know, certainly the, the house is basically uh, against Canada here. Most of the fans are on the Russian side, but Canada, had the, the contingent that's here has been noisy, has done a great job of holding up their end and really cheering aloud. The Rock Hids have been super up there in the stands. They have, and you know, Canada had a different sort of pressure as well, being the, the defending champions. And I think that can certainly, like you said, getting to the final was perhaps a big relief for them. Well, you have to admire Canada for the game they've played today, because as you mentioned, uh, Katie, a lot of pressure on them. But they're at 79% as a team, and Russia's down to 56%. That stone was just barely biting the rings. And Canada nails a hit on it. And if we do the number count now, Russia will we need to count six points to tie this game up. And they have eight in the next end and six and only 14 stones left a tall order tall order against any team especially against the way Canada's curling right now so Svetlana Akmova from, from Dolico Popuri played in three previous world championships Well, Canada can really play either or now. I mean, whatever they're shooting at is just make something red go away. Canada doesn't care if they're peeling a guard or a stone in the rings. And Dennis Thiessen playing a very good game today. It's been, I would think, his best, best game. And when you're th second and third are curling as great as they have in the middle of the lineup, it really puts the pressure on the other team. I really attribute Canada's fine play in the middle of the lineup. And for Canada, they didn't care whether they got the back one or the front one to just make the red ones go away. And it's a, just a numbers game now. Keep Russia from scoring anything real big. And Thiessen. Certainly the people in Winnipeg will be proud of him the way he's played today. His strongest game. The round robin or the semis really played super. And Russia wishes they had saved that some of that seven ender they scored in the last game for this match. Yeah, they certainly will. As they nailed Great Britain for a seven ender, and that's a record score in Paralympic wheelchair curling. They look very dominant in this in their semi-final. Well, tap that one back to lie two and might be setting Canada up for a possible double. And this ice cube venue has been wonderful for curling and Sochi through the Olympics and now the Paralympics. Beautiful building holding 3,000 fans and it's portable too. It's portable. You can take it home with you, Katie, if you want. I could take it away. <laughs> Uh, it is movable of all as all of the all of these arenas uh, in the coastal cluster just down by the black sea this is the smallest of the arenas and it's portable and the other ones are too huge to be moved but they're all very close to each other it's the most compact games in the history of the olympic movement yes it's been terrific to be able to walk around the olympic and paralympic park Almost the double for Ina, but she'll hit and stay. And running at 86% today, the highest of any player. And coming up with a super duper match. Well, this game is on sheet C, and the players during the event 
track all the stones they play with. They get games on every sheet. They get to play all the different stones, and they will keep a book on the stones. And for this gold medal game, they are able to choose stones from different sheets if they want. But it looks like Canada stayed with this uh, yellow set on sheet C. They really like these stones. And, you, you know, if you have a really good game, you go and you mark your stones and say, oh, I like those. When it comes to the playoffs, yeah. you'd select those stones. It certainly is a, it's a sport of detail. Stopwatches and... Russia, seeing if they can build an end here. The possibility of two and just playing the drawdown, but this will come up short from Merritt. And the fans, nothing to cheer about there. It's very quiet in there at the moment. Yeah. Armstrong with the brush down already. Ina will play her out, turn around that guard to see if she can chip out that back stone. <laughs> She's winning the battle to the third. And a player's goal always in a game is to try and outplay the, their, their opponent. The third against third, second against second. And, and Canada winning the battle of the positions, winning all four. Lead is the only one that's been really, really close between Sonia Goody and Alexander. Shevchenko. If this makes contact, and yes, it will. Ina with the hit and stay. Brilliant as usual. And the gal whose motto is never let them see you not smiling has lots to smile about. And the rock heads with all their painted gray rocks on their head. And actually, the ice cube is built like a rock on the outside. The whole round structure of the building. As they try to exemplify the look of a curling stone. And well, it's up too late for Russia. Oh, they need a lot of counting in a hurry. They're into the seventh inning in this eight in game. And Russia trails it by a score of six to two. They haven't been on the scoreboard. It's unbelievable, Katie. They haven't been on the scoreboard since the first end. I mean, it doesn't feel that way, oddly you've had enough. Me so mes <laughs> you've had me so mesmerized, <laughs> I didn't realize that. They haven't scored since the two in the first end. They have not. Wow. As it, is, it is odd. It does not feel that way, and yet it is the case. Yeah. We've they had started, Canada. They got two in the first end and have been shut out the rest of the way. That last three in the sixth end. Yeah, well, that was the killer. It was that the was killer, the yes. <laughs> Unless I absolutely have to. Well, it smiles from Canada now. They're, they're starting to sense the fact that this one's almost in the bag. Just a matter of yeah. eliminating some stones. I don't think they ever doubted themselves, you know, through the event. But they had games where they really were the roller coaster. They beat... Slovakia 16-0 in the next game they come out in the final of the round robin with a chance to clinch first place and they're down 12-0 to Finland, Finland yes. yeah so like you know the big roller coaster and they had to laugh at the end of that game they hadn't been shellacked like that for a long time and certainly Finland had not had the best of tournaments themselves so wouldn't necessarily have expected right that there. result yeah Finland no was either. was two and seven in the round robin but they beat Great Britain 13 to four and then hammered Canada 12-1. Well, Finland can play, there's no doubt about it. They just they lost a lot of close matches. A chance here to draw into the pocket for Andre. He can weld one right into that pocket and Jim, I don't think would have any way to get it out. And I've played in front of home crowds before when you're not having a good game, and it's it's a horrible feeling when you feel like you're letting people down. It's just not fun. Yes. Andre with the outturned freeze into this pocket. The entire crowd pulling for him on this shot. Wait, looks really nice. He can jiggle these as long as he doesn't move them too far. Wow, what a great shot that is. Oh, couldn't have carried that down any better. There's no way to get that stone out. But it's a shot stone in the pocket. And that's using the other team's stones against them. Beautiful shot. 
Well, he's dropped down to 40 percent and makes a good shot there. Andre was 80 percent from the start and has moved to 40. Jimmy was 25 percent and has taken it up to 65. And the gym with those two big draws where they stole two in the fourth end behind the center guard where I said Russia should have gone first. But didn't and ended up paying the price. Now Jim knowing there's no way to get this stone out so he'll just play a freeze to it. That'll make a good draw down in front of it. Canada Maple Leaf looking good right now and in the Olympics here it was Jennifer Jones and she is the hero of Thiessen right behind there. Je Jennifer Jones won gold for Canada on the women's side in the Olympics and Brad Jacobs gold on the men's side. So another kind of three-peat possible yes. for Canada. Not just the Paralympics three-peat but Sochi being good to all three teams. Jim with the Nudge, not a bad shot. Could be tough to get out. For the crowd, or perhaps the well, the Canadian fans have been noisy bunch. Not a bad shot. It'd be difficult to get past that yellow one without leaving it for second shot. Russia with a chance here for two, but very tough to save the shooter. Not a pretty good, pretty good shot by Jim. Well, he can definitely throw high and hard and get these two yellows up, but then his shooter might roll away to only count the single. When you get to this stage in the match, you can't really necessarily always play you the way you want to because you've got a lot of ground to make up. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, this is an absolute need of two for Russia. They trail at 8-2 here in the last stone of the seventh end in this eight-end game. The only way it goes extra end is Russia figures out how to score six quick points. Well, in Trino in 2006, it was Chris Daw from Saskatchewan winning gold. Pardon me, from Canada winning gold. And Jim Armstrong in 2010 in Vancouver. And Armstrong with a chance here to make it three in a row for Canada. In Russia here, a chance for two. This is looking fairly good. Hit the double. Well, that shooter just rolls a little bit too far. It's a very tricky shot. But a count of one, Russia back on the scoreboard. Katie on the scoreboard front after the, hadn't scored since the first end. First Atlanta end. Two. Yeah, well, back on the scoreboard. That would feel good, particularly for Andrei Smirnov, whose percentage had dipped so far. And like you say, in front of the home crowd, it never feels good when you're not having the best of games. And I think Russia just thinking, do we play the eighth end or not down five? They'll get together and discuss it. Just chatting it over whether they should go through the process. I think their hometown fans would like to see them play it out. And Canada basically knowing that it's in the bag now. Yeah, we'll have the one last in. That's the way it should be. Play it out. Miracle games have happened in the past. You never know. <laughs> and you don't know if you don't take a shot. In it to win it, Ed. Yeah. And I think it's a, a chance for the Russian fans to <coughs> really uh, show their appreciation for this team. It was been so wonderful for them the whole week. They've certainly given them a lot to cheer about. Alexander Shevchenko playing lead stones and he's had good numbers today, 75%. And play into the free guard zone. And although Canada would like to peel that stone off, 
It can't be totally removed until after the fourth stone of the end of it has been played. And can't I think we'll just throw theirs through. And the reason for that free guard zone came from the fact that in around the 1980s, curling became so proficient on the able-bodied side that there was so much hitting, there was very few rocks in play, so the mind heads of curling all got together and said, let's do something so we can have a more interesting game, and along came uh, the free guard zone, the four rock rule, the team that wants to play offense can. So has it improved things a lot? Drastically, most, you know, curling is now <laughs> tremendous game with the free guard zone. The team that want to play offense, they can. And usually it's it's the team that throws first can that can dictate the area of play because they get to put that first stone in a play. So if they want a center draw game, or we saw with Armstrong here when they threw the center guard two ends in a row and went after the draw game. It worked both times. Russia wanting to keep this stone out in front, but still protected as well until the second throw. And Canada will just cast their granite away again. And do these throws count into a player's percentages? No, they don't. It's just they a, don't. a non-shot to throw okay. away. Although if I was playing, I'd like it to count in my percentages. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Take anything when you can. Another throw through for Canada. And their lead has really played a great game. Sonia with a masterful game all the way through. Really appreciated by her fans. Great consistency. She's and she has a chance here to really do something. Uh, she's the only player in the Paralympic curling to ever win two gold medals, 06 and, and 2010. And for her, it could be three. To go along with her three world titles in 09, 11, and 13. Quite the resume for her. Sonia was also the flag bearer in the opening ceremonies for Canada. They had that huge thrill, she said. And her hero is Canadian wheelchair racer Rick Hansen, who has raced across the world. And Danny Thiessen and 52-year-old from that Winnipeg area. Well, Helene, his wife, and his three kids would be very proud of him. And his motto of live, dream, and enjoy is certainly a good enjoyment here today. Nice hit and, and roll away with his shooter. And it's just a numbers game now. Let's see, Russia with probably only enough stones to tie if they could count them all. And that's just five stones. You must count every one of them uh, they have two guards in front but i like this russian team uh, katie I, you know i really like the way they play i was just i think one of those days where they got a little bit flustered and it's always tough playing canada just a little flustered today and didn't play their best match. I'm pretty sure they would like to start this all over again from scratch. I'm sure take they another, would. Take another run at it. I'm sure they would. They know they can play better. Huh? They showed that during the week anyway. Yeah. It's a big experience for them. And uh, they ha did win a world championship in 2012, so they know they're capable. And this final will, will also help their resume and their experience going forward. You Always know, something to learn from it. Yeah, they definitely will learn from this game. Denny with the outturn hit. And not too many curling teams around with two left-handers. And I see that you're left-handed too. I was just about to say that. And, and so am I. Yes, so, so there's am I, something huh? in that with the curling. 
But you don't see too many of them around, you see. Uh, well, there have, I think in this tournament, maybe four or five people throwing left handed. But not to, not to drop and you have two in the same team. Now you see that really long stick of rushes in behind the wheelchair sticking up. Uh, you really have to be careful. Oh, I think they're doing handshakes. Yes, they are. Rushes running out of stones. No more stones. They can't tie. The teams are rushes conceding. Canada gets to celebrate. For Ina, her second medal to go with the win of Vancouver. For Sonia, her third. And the handshakes between the two skips, wishing each other well. It's a terrific victory there now, Canada. They are the Paralympic champions for the third time. Quite an historic occasion. The smiles reveal it all. Absolute joy painted on their faces. And the three Pete. And this is a very humble team. And they take victory in stride. And there's Team Russia waving to their fans. And Canada as well. And it was a day for the Rockheads from Canada. Their team came through big time. The experience certainly shone through. The Russians have had a terrific tournament and they certainly have entertained the crowds here in the Ice Cube. Yeah, first place in the round robin with a record of eight and one. And 13 to four over Great Britain in the semifinal. Would have liked to have saved some of those points for the final here. Svetlana yeah. and Merritt and Andre and Alexander. Their fifth player, Oksana. A beautiful effort by them all the way through. Canada with the better of their percentages. 80% as a team in this match. Wow, that's some kind of final game from them. Very, very impressive they Canada. Sa they saved their absolute best for the last. The Maple Leaf on show. Team Canada celebrates the big win here. I know the best at third the entire week and she really proved it today, 88%. Canada saved the best for the last, playing a great game today, 80% as a team. And it was a match where Russia counted two in the first stint and looked like they might be the team to run away with it, but Canada came back with one and then steals of one and two and one and three. So congratulations to Danny and his team. Canada wins their three-peat by a score of eight to three, saving their best for the last year. Just a great final game and win the gold medal for Canada. It was a real great tussle. I thoroughly enjoyed that final. It was, it was super to watch. And the Russians, I'm sure, will be happy with their silver medal, perhaps in a little bit of time. When you've got to a final like that, it's always, first of all, a sense of disappointment. You can see some smiles now appearing on their faces and they've been thanking the crowd. Marvelous occasion. Coach for Canada, Joe Ray, and the fifth man, Mark Idison, who was injured. Uh, he uh, was a pilot and got injured in a helicopter accident. He fared better than the helicopter. He's playing curling and winning a gold medal. Congratulations all around. That's just super. It makes you wonder then Canada who was who's going to be the first really to 
to knock them off of the Paralympic, take their crown away. It could, could be some time you get the feeling. Yeah, well, this Russian team very, very strong, so I expect great things. There's Oksana, the fifth player on the team. In Russia, plenty to be happy about. Just a great tournament for them. Absolutely. The coach out to congratulate them, Anton Batugin. An emotional day for them. Silver medal to Russia, very well deserved as well to get to this point and play so well, as well as they did. And Andre almost brought to tears there. Well, we will back, be back with the flower presentations and also the awarding of medals in a short time as uh, things are set up. 